welcome to Travel with Roland. Step into my world of discovery as I share my top five things that I discovered in the amazing Philippines. From languages that sing to pride that shines, we are in for an eye-opening ride. Join me in my quest to uncover the top five things that made me scratch my head in amazement. Let's dive in. Arriving in the Philippines, my head was filled with countless videos. I thought I had a grasp of what awaited me. But as reality unfolded, my perceptions underwent a breathtaking transformation. This is a compilation of five things that I thought I understood, but now I'm beginning to understand. There are many things that I did not understand. But probably number one was, there are so many different languages. And I'm not kidding about this. Really? So many languages. Tagalog is Tagalog? Not the only language in the Philippines. There is Bisayan and it's many different dialects. And then about 70 million people speak English as well. This makes living in the Philippines both easy and hard at the same time. It takes a lot of commitment to learn those languages. If you're a foreigner like me, you have to learn Bisayan and Tagalog. I found it easier to learn Bisayan in Bahol because everybody spoke Bisayan. But in Cavite, everybody tried to speak English to me and that made it much harder for me to learn Tagalog. It was very easy to communicate, but I wanted to communicate on a deeper level. Now Tagalog and Bisayan, they are beautiful languages. They are not harsh on the ear like Vietnamese or German. They have beautiful sounds. But it is really hard for me as a foreigner to speak three different vowel sounds in a row. Sentences like Dipa a asahin, which means do not hope, quite challenging for a foreigner to say. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> and now it's time for a word from our incredibly talented sponsor. Is it DJI? Is it Canon? Let's have a look. It's me. And I'm Judge James. Hi there, viewers. While we're on this wonderful adventure, I wanted to take a quick detour to tell you a little bit about myself and introduce you to the one and only me. Don't forget me. That's Judge James. J U D. Get this right. Spell it right. That's right. The face behind the camera. I just want to let you know that if you are enjoying these explorations and these insights, then you're in for a treat because there's a whole lot more where they came from. And I want you to know that making a video takes hours. And when you hit that notifications bell, it lets you know when my videos are coming up. It really helps me. Hit the notifications bell. And if you would watch these videos more than once, they're quite entertaining. You can have a good laugh at me. He is my favorite. I'm quite okay with you laughing at me, but could you hit that notifications bell? That's the really big one, the notifications bell. Thanks guys. The second thing is how much Filipino pride there really is. Filipino pride? They even have a sentence for this. They call it Pinoy pride. This is so ingrained into them. They are proud of their heritage, their beautiful land, their people, their animals, and even their ingenuity. It is so ingrained into them, and pleasantly so. And when you mention any of these names, there is this Pinoy pride that immediately rises up. Manny Pacquiao, Leah Salonga, and Bruno Mars. The sense of excitement that these names bring onto Filipino faces is a sight to behold. And there would be many others that would bring Pinoy pride. Let me know in the comments the ones that you are most proud of, friends. Pinoy pride is reflected in so many areas. Cultural heritage, family and community, fiestas, by a Hinan spirit, that is community unity, especially when a need or calamity arises. Resilience despite adversity, hospitality, love of basketball, love of food, and their achievements in cultural arts, entertainment and sport. It does have a darker side. If you do anything to bring the Philippines down, it can bring strong reactions from Filipino people. I would love to know the worst thing a foreigner could say to a Filipino. I found it even ironic that even Filipino scammers, and there are just a few, do not want their actions to bring the Pinoy people down. The Philippine people are so religious. I mean, 
they really are religious. Hmm. Religious, you say? Even more so than the USA and perhaps even Brazil. Everywhere you go, there are signs on jeepneys and tricycles and billboards which demonstrate the love for scripture and Bible. The biggest sign I saw in the Philippines was on the tollway and it was over six stories high. It was huge. It proudly displayed the scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. In Australia, there would have been riots or possible subtle pressure to put on media to pull that billboard down. Yes, Australia is not a Christian country. There is an outright hostility in Australia to tolerate anything that was outrightly Christian. In the Philippines, it's clear there is Christianity and it's very, very visible. Number four, rice is life. Rice is life? When I say rice is life, Filipinos know what I mean. Every meal has to have rice. It is even at McDonald's. There's rice at McDonald's. The definition of the ultimate meal in the Philippines is unlimited rice. It is not a real restaurant unless it has rice. Jollibee, which is the Filipino equivalent of KFC, has a significant amount of rice on the menu. And the Pinoy people are likely to enjoy Jollibee rather than Starbucks, McDonald's, KFC. Rice is the food that the Filipinos work hardest for. In the rice paddies, it is back-breaking work that just has to be done. Old and young end up planting rice. Harvesting and drying rice on the sides of the roads on mats called panik. This is so ingrained in the culture that streets are half covered in rice that is drying on the sides of the roads. Everyone just drives around these mats out of respect for this tradition. And my fifth point is that karaoke is everywhere. Karaoke? The most common form of entertainment for the Filipino people, apart from Facebook, is karaoke. It brings out the community and you don't have to be a good singer to join the fun of karaoke. It has gotten to be such a part of the Filipino life that the government has had to create laws around karaoke. Now that is my kind of thing. Laws. You're not allowed to do karaoke after 10 p.m. at night. Bars need to have a permit to offer karaoke services in certain councils. Volume controls and public nuisance laws have been enacted in the Philippines to specify when and where karaoke can be played. Karaoke laws? Ho 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 ho! I love karaoke. What an amazing way for Filipinos to join in community spirit. Karaoke can be seen at swimming holes and bars, online and parties in people's houses and out on the streets. There are very few places in the Philippines where you can go where you actually don't hear the sound of karaoke somewhere, somehow. What is it that you want people to really understand about the Philippines? Please discuss with me in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Or discuss with me. Catch you in the next video.